I've been playing PAX Day since Monday, and so far I am really enjoying the game. My next video will be a complete review of the game that accounts for it being in an alpha state. Until a few days ago, I hadn't checked out any other opinions on the game, but I made the mistake of checking the internet's opinion a couple of days ago. One of the bigger criticisms that I keep seeing is that PAX Day is not an MMO. Which, to be fair, if we are judging the game in its current state, then sure, it currently lacks quite a few MMO features. But of course, it's not fair in any way to judge a game in an alpha state as if it's a completed product. A game that literally is only three years into development at this point. No matter what I or anyone else says, people will judge this game as if it is a completed project. So I'm just going to move on from this point because that will probably not change. The not-MMO voices all seem to say this is a survival game and not an MMO. Which, sure, there are many similarities. The UI is very survival game-like. And to be fair, I'm not wild about the current UI. I do hope that they move it more towards an MMO type of UI. But again, this is alpha. The building in the game is certainly heavily inspired by Valheim, which is something the developers have stated on multiple occasions. And I can see how one could quickly label this a survival game if the only MMOs you have played are theme park MMOs and if you've played some survival games. Because obviously you're going to compare it to what you know. But what if we compare survival games to sandbox MMOs because there are quite a few similarities between the two. Look at building, for instance. A lot of sandbox MMOs have had freeform open world building systems. Look at a game like Shadowbane. This game existed way before survival games and players built every single city on each server. No one called it a survival game because survival games didn't even exist. Another comparison between sandbox MMOs and survival games is they are often classless systems that favor level specific skills to form your class. A few examples of sandbox MMOs that had this sort of classless system are EVE Online, RuneScape, Mortal Online, Albion, and Darkfall. A few of those games also had open world building systems, yet no one labels these games as survival games. What if we compare current player counts and map sizes between sandbox MMOs and survival games? Here is where you do start to see some glaring differences. The maximum server capacity for survival games is around 100 players, but if if you've ever tried to do that on most of these games, they don't handle it very well. The map sizes are usually much smaller than MMO map sizes for these types of games as well. If we look at PAX Day currently with a 7,000 player cap in its very first alpha, that puts it as much more massive than most currently released MMOs. And keep in mind the goal of the developers is 20,000 players per server. If they reach that, only E would really compare. Another very key difference between sandbox MMOs and survival games is the idea of persistent servers. Pax Day is going to have a persistent server. There are no private servers, but when you compare that to games like Valheim, everybody is on a private server for the most part. Yes, there are public servers that are persistent, but usually in most of those games, they're not very well populated. Then look at the map size. Pax Day's current map size of 300 square kilometers in the alpha makes it bigger than all of the survival games except Valheim. But remember, Valheim has a server cap of 10 players, and 300 square kilometers compares to most MMOs. Mortal Online is 64 square kilometers, Albion is 600, BDO's 400, Arcage was 600, Vanilla WoW was 207, New World was 40, ESO 400. 100, Guild Wars 2 was 23. All of these games are correctly labeled as MMOs, despite some of them having smaller maps than PAX Day and even some of the survival games. And keep in mind, PAX Day's map is likely to get much larger. So far, we only have the Heartlands provinces. We know they are going to be adding at least one more province type, Contested Provinces, which will be the PvP provinces. We have no idea how big the map will eventually be, but I would estimate anywhere from 600 to 1200 square kilometers is completely possible. There is one valid argument, in my opinion, for PAX Day not being a full-blown MMO once the game is fully fleshed out and released. That is the phasing. Now, I have seen a lot of misinformation spread about how this is planned to work in PAX Day. Please, go read the tech FAQ. I will have it linked, and it explains it in detail. But to give a brief synopsis of how the server stitching and phasing works, this is the current alpha map with all four provinces connected. This map is broken down into 
into smaller chunks that are roughly 11 kilometers squared in size. Each of these chunks is hosted on its own UE5 server, and these chunks are stitched together to form one giant server. When you walk between them, you seamlessly transition to a new server. The small chunks can also phase if too many people are in that chunk. The current limit is 150 players in these chunks before phasing kicks in. This limit is said to go up a lot in the future, and potentially some areas might not even have phasing eventually, especially the PvP areas. Currently, phasing is rarely kicking in in the alpha, but once they max out the server, maybe we'll see some more phasing happen. However, eventually if the phasing limit is increased, then even at launch, phasing might be pretty minimal, especially if they drastically increase the size of the world map, which I think they will. And if you look at other MMOs, most either utilize some sort of mega server technology, phasing, or cooling the number of players on screen, which in essence are all accomplishing the same thing, handling situations where there's a lot of players in one area. To me, I do think cooling of players that are shown on your screen is the best overall solution compared to phasing and the other methods. But still, I don't think that's perfect either. But I do challenge you to find many popular MMOs that do not use one of these methods to deal with areas becoming overcrowded. They do exist, but they are quite rare. But again, I do want to drive home the point that survival games and sandbox MMOs have historically had a lot in common with each other, and not nearly as much in common with theme park MMOs. In fact, one could make the argument that perhaps survival games were inspired by sandbox MMOs of days past. Sandbox MMOs have not been made in abundance for a very long time, as all the funding went to chasing WoW clone theme parks. But the ideas I do think lived on with the wave of survival games we have seen in the last 10 years. And if there's still doubts that PAX Day is not an MMO for you, consider that the developers come from EVE Online, and that EVE Online is one of the few sandbox MMOs to achieve any kind of success, historically. And no one labels it a survival game, they label it an MMO, and that is the correct label for that game. So while it might not truly be an MMO yet, I think it will eventually get there. And I think that is the direction they want to take it. In the next video, I will do a comprehensive, objective, and unbiased review of PAX Day that does, of course, consider that it's in an alpha state. Some things I do think can still be criticized, like the decision to have phasing in the game, because that is a long-term design decision. And I will do that, but I will also praise where praise is due. PAX Day has that dreaded word that I have uttered many times about MMOs. Potential. But so many times we have seen potential squandered, so I do want to wait and see before I ever anoint this game the next great MMO. Just like Ashes of Creation or any other upcoming MMO, it still has to prove it. But I do think so far it is on the right path. I will try to stream some PAX Day this week over on my Twitch. Unfortunately, I have been sick most of this week, which is why I haven't been streaming. But hopefully streams will be resuming soon. If you need a guild for the alpha, we are recruiting. I do have a wiki for PAX Day that I am currently way behind on updating. Keep in mind, I did get a few keys for PAX Day, and my priority for handing them out was first the editors who worked on the wiki with me, and then my guildmates. I could have certainly used them to boost my stream numbers, but instead I took care of my own people first. So if you do want to get into future alphas, those are some new ways to get a better chance to get in. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.